if a person's in good health and they eat uh, a large bowl of oatmeal, you know, a substantial amount, that blood sugar should not raise exponentially. They should be able to tolerate that. Okay? I mean, their blood sugar will go up a little bit, but it should not go way out, you know, skyrocket way out there. Make sense? So we're going to see some variance here. But this is definitely on the low end. You know, 1.4 would, would that'd still be in the A range, but it's too low considering what we've got going on here. Um, we're seeing, you know, the dropping of some important elements here. You know, iodine is going to be the most important one. So iodine in this, there's some body regulation, some temperature issues. All right. Um, we would want to check, uh, you know, in the course, you know, like you could look at this first with gums and, and, and the fingernails, check and see if there's any other issues. Anything else that we should see there? What what type of um, calcium will you try on there? Lactate. Yeah, we could do like maybe three capsules of calcium lactate a day. We're not really trying to push it down hard, just something to balance, but we want to make sure that we're giving a neutral calcium as the primary because it's going to have better absorption. See, this is this is high, but it's not uh, it's not the end of the world. We're still we're still somewhere in a decent range. So, three caps, four caps max on the cow. Anything else? Vitamin C acceptable in this range? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually a little acid on this end here. You know, it's questionable. Mm -hmm. right. Let's see, uh, sugar is the biggest issue that I see, the oxygen, um, body temperature, some, some uh, possible thyroid issues. Let's see, if there's anything I'm missing here. Uh, this, me okay, here's what it says, um, several points need to be compared with pattern one. Uh, first, compared with this one. There is a digestive problem in this pattern. Uh, there is a loss of vitamin C. Uh, so we would see uh, colds and flus might be uh, more common with this person. The high areas are something to be a bit concerned about here. Um, yeah, it's 14. 14, even though it's not as high as this, mm -hmm. that is a pretty high urea. Now, when we start putting somebody on a program, it's not that we're initially trying to get those right down, but that is a high number for a year, you know, first test. We're going to see some exhaustion here in this number, 14. We equated that to hours a day, mm -hmm. 14 hours a day. We would want to make sure that this person is not eating, like the average American diet is eating a large meal before bed. We, we want to get this person out of this type of a habit because they're not going to be feeling too good in the morning. We're going to be seeing this here as well. They're going to be uh, without a lot of energy. This is a lack of oxygen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else on that one? You guys feel comfortable with that? Um, I'm going to put potassium, potassium but because that's what our book says. But I'm just gonna like. You had a book. What did the book say about potassium? Um, no, I was looking at four at fourteen. You know, if it says if you're under. Um, oh, we don't know the weight of that person. Though. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So, so we don't really have that factor. Like if this was a, a, a spe you see more potassium deficiency with women as well. Right. So if it was a female, woman, yeah, 180 and five foot four, yeah. We would see something in the okay. in that. That's what I'm thinking. Would, would you use your um, your chart, your urea and salt chart on this with the blood sugar? No, we just know right off the bat that's pretty low. Okay. You could just kind of look at that, right? Mm -hmm. Don't don't worry. Like if you actually tried to figure that out with the urea salt chart, you probably end up in the negative. Yeah. yeah. So which which number showed the lack of oxygen? This being low. Okay. With the salt being high, okay. that's that's definitely going to be the issue there. Now, this is an actual person that came. Uh, what did we find with this person? 
probably viruses and yeast. Well, do you think yeast would really be a, a, a big one in this? Extremes of either direction. Yeah. You know, they can mutate into cancer, but, you know. We see a high sugar, yeah. high salt. but at the same time we see an incredibly high salt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do have a high urea. Um, Water. You, are you, what, what else? Uh, I'm going to give you just a couple seconds to think on this one. What, what else do you see in this? I mean, I know what this person's condition is. So. Heart stress. Yeah, there's some heart stress in that for sure. Cholesterol, that's a good one. Because the sugar be low because of the high salt? Well, by the time you figure out the sugar on that, that is actually kind of a low number. Um, it, it is a high one to actually get in a test. Uh, let's see what, do the math on that one. A 40 isn't even on the chart, I don't believe. Would well, they also be very uh, dehydrated and so be very tired with that 40s? Yeah, 40s in the heart stress yeah. zone. It should be very tired. We, you know, on our, oh, Well, if you deduct out that 40C, you're looking at just a, a higher two. And that's not even touching your ears. Well, let's just let's just leave the sugar part and call it good for now. It's really not maybe the most most troubling thing in that. And see, if I would have seen that, that would be the thing I would have focused on. You know. Well, that high salt is a real big deal. Yeah, the sugar and the salt. We have a lot of breakdown going in this. With the pH, too. We have a double acid. <laughs> to me, when I look at this test, honestly, um, I see this as probably the biggest deal. Mm -hmm. Slide three. Yeah. Uh, this person had cancer. Yeah. The uterine yeah. cancer. Um, very low pH. It's a double low. She had some sort of, uh, you, you would see with the urine pH that low, probably some diarrhea or loose stool issues. Uh, maybe even Crohn's or uh, uh, reticulitis. Anything. Any, you could just start naming bowel troubles. Constipation may not be the biggest trouble that you would see there. And that wasn't with her. Um, she is a bit petite. Uh, even though 140 pounds, she was uh, pretty skinny for this. That was just the build. She was rather petite in this range. Um, a lot of breakdown in this person's body. And they were extremely tired. You know, tired numbers. Um, anyway, that was cancer. What would you do for this, this person? <laughs> what, what, what would be some things that you would recommend to her, though? Distilled water pass. Yeah, distilled water would be a good one for her. That's for sure. See, I I want to put her on ionized distilled for three days, and then ionized because her positive she's so far in the positive zone, switched polarity, that you want to give her some negative charge. She could go walk outside on the grass if it were summer. Okay, what what we did mm -hmm. is put her on ionized water. Yeah. I only say the distilled water because that's a uh, green thing. I put but her on I ionized too. water. Um, Do you mean high alkaline when you say ionized? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the lowest level. Yeah, we started her out on an 8.5, mm -hmm. and we worked up in the course, you know, just for the three days, and then we switched her to a 9 uh, and kept her at a 9. We didn't really get her much higher than that when we worked with her. Uh, and we're trying to get the salt down and the pH up. Um, Did you give her any calcium? What kind of calcium is it? Any Cal 2? Cal 2 would be a good one to go to. Uh, what about uh, anything else? What would be something to help uh, really get this up? You know what? I was just reading, not that I knew this until I read it in the morning. Yeah. But they said, when well, you have a really high salt level, it's affecting all the fluids of the whole body, and that carbamide or urea will bring that down fairly quickly. That's in his book today. But do you ever use that? Carbamide? It says carbamide. Urea is actually urea or carbamide. That's a little bit more uh, satisfactory to people. If you tell them you're going to give you a urea tablet, they might not want to take it. But if you just say carbamide that balances your fluid levels in the body, they might be a little more doable. And that's what it said in there. He said that it's the only mm -hmm. substance that he knows that can get your electrolytes back. Uh, I mean, uh, your, your conductivity levels down. In a hurry, or those two things. Uh, you, you'll be able to get this person's conductivity level down with just water, pretty quick. And, and that's what you know. This, this. Go ahead. 
You had a baking soda or that Yeah, now look, uh, in this person's case, I would just use to start with the ionized water. The baking soda is for the stubborn mm -hmm. numbers. If this person, after a week, their numbers are still very low, like even if they came up to a six here, that would be moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So at the end of two weeks, we would hope that now, at the end of one week, this pH is actually at an eight. Uh, and that's because we included the calciums in that. And, and that, that's getting a little bit on the high side, and so I backed off on the Cal 2 and just kept her with the aspartate. Would you use other minerals too, besides the calciums? Would you use um, iodine and things like that? Okay, yeah. Uh, in the case of this, lots of the superfood is what I did mm -hmm. uh, because. I mean, I mean, when she came, I actually just made a big batch of superfood, and because of this gal, I had put in the dulse and the kelp in full parts, which is why if you taste, that's, I made eight pounds at one time, and I'm down to about the last pound. That was about two months ago, two and a half months ago. So, you know, we went through a lot of it, but this superfood batch, I made taste So how did the person finally come out? Well, we only worked with her for one week. Uh, the, she's a, a, a a fairly local person. She lives here in the state of Kentucky. So we told her to get uh, an ionized water machine. But you know what? Um, I only stayed in contact with her for about three weeks. You know, uh, so the, the number did come up. The ureas stayed high. They never went down. The um, salt level got down to about a 15 when she left. It was still high. That's good, though. Um, and, and the sugar did come down to uh, like a two and a half or three range, I believe. But um, what stage of cancer? She just found out she had uterine cancer. We're seeing some low sugar. Uh, the low sugar combined with the low salt is what was the giveaway on too much water coming in. Uh, higher salt and low sugar that. Definite hypoglycemia. Say that one more time. Say that one more time. High salt and a low sugar is almost a dead giveaway of uh, hypoglycemia. High salt, but that salt is low. You yeah, so instead of a giveaway on the hypoglycemia, so it's a wash. This is not really a, a, an accurate test. Mm -hmm. It's a good pun. Huh? It's a good pun. Pun? Yeah. It's a wash. It's a wash. <laughs> so, um, anyway, did you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, and if we didn't have the ionized water in there, uh, what would we be doing for the pH? Lactate. Yeah, calcium lactate. Uh, even calcium citrate could be added with the calcium lactate rather than a gluconate. Uh, and we would focus more on those two for a while. Six capsules of the lactate. Um, Depending on, on, I don't use citrate, so, but that's one you would use here. What about vitamin C? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could use vitamin C. You could use two, three, four grams, and that would be pretty safe. Um, all right, can we move on on that? So we didn't get a whole, a really good picture on here. Uh, we didn't really address this. This is a bit high, but because it's probably been on a bit of a health program here, this is probably a little bit of a dumping that's going on there.